Well, Rachel, it's so lovely to connect with you in this way. Thank you for joining me for our Learn to Listen series. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, I know you're based in Texas and you have a wonderful ministry, Yet Praise Dance Company. So I'd love for you to share with our listeners about just your involvement with dance, um, faith and ministry, and some about the company. And then we'll jump into some other questions if that's okay. That's fine. Uh, well, again, my name is Rachel Frazier. I'm the director of Yet Praise Dance Company. And uh, right now, I've been operating in dance ministry for 20 years. Uh, dance was a very strong influence in my walk with Christ. I feel like it between prayer and dance, it was the glue that was able to hold me together in those early days of salvation. Um, oftentimes, I've used dance to pour out my heart to the Lord when I couldn't find words to pray. And so through that process, I not only was able to develop a strong prayer life, but I was able to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through me to really cultivate the gift of dance. I do not have any formal training. Literally everything that I have has come from the Holy Spirit. So uh, as far as Yet Praise Dance Company, it actually started as an outreach ministry to our community. So what we used to do in the early stages is use dance as a way to reach people that would not go to church. And so the majority of our students were kids from the community and we would use Christian music and dance as a way to witness Jesus Christ to them. So we'd have a recital at the end of each semester and offer salvation to the families. And so many family members have received Christ uh, through the company. Uh, so as the, the time evolved and the Lord began to unfold more of the vision for the studio, we actually began to travel outside of Burnett, Texas and reach ministries all over the United States with really promoting living a holy lifestyle. Yes, we love five, six, seven, eight, but we love a holy lifestyle more than anything. So that's really uh, what we believe in and what we try to share with as many ministries as God would allow us to come in contact with. That's gorgeous. And to hear, you know, just how things can happen just from a transplant situation where it seems like yeah. um, things are tumultuous or just challenging and how God can birth something new. And for yeah. you to know that and to trust him for that new time and that new season, it's just beautiful, mm -hmm. really beautiful. Yeah, God has really been faithful to us. Um, our church actually came from New Orleans through Hurricane Katrina and Rita. And it was a devastating situation for the majority of the residents of New Orleans. But for our ministry, it was a tremendous blessing because we got to learn God in a way we hadn't known him before. And that transition taught me how to be pliable and flexible as the Lord transitions us in other areas. So with your ministry, is it predominantly via one church or do you have individuals from other churches that are affiliated with the, with your Yet Praise Dance Company? Well, Yet Praise Dance Company is an individual ministry. Uh, we are birthed from my church, which is Smoking for Jesus Ministry, led by uh, Pastor Willie L. Monet Sr. He's literally cultivated me in the word for 20 years. I have not bounced from one church to the next. I've been in that one ministry, thriving and growing in God. Um, but it was through my service in my church that the Lord birthed Yet Praise Dance Company. Um, now, Yet Praise Dance Company now also has the online school of worship. And basically the online school of worship is a uh, mentorship leadership training that helps dancers to learn to live a holy lifestyle, to really become intimate with the Lord. Now we teach from the word, but we also teach actual dance techniques. So half of the class is biblical teaching from God's word. The other half of the class is technical dance training. Uh, and I think this is needed because so many people want the training, but it, the only way to really get it is through a secular community. And so the Lord just impressed upon my heart to give his people something that they, they can benefit and use in their ministry without having to go to the world to get it. Well, it's beautiful how you're weaving in 
biblical truth with this understanding of how God's made and designed and created our temple and how we can align with educational teaching and principles. So it's really beautiful. And, and we know that everybody's calling is different and distinct. And I really appreciate that you have chosen to listen to God, to um, be guided and led to fulfill what his calling is through you. So really this just leads us into the next question about how we cultivate different ways and disciplines for learning how to listen to the voice of God. So I'd love for you to share um, just what ways has God um, used modes of communication to, to commune with you and to speak to you? Well, um, as I stated earlier, the most important thing to me is my relationship with the Lord, but the relationship with God is only built through prayer. And so through many hours of prayer, many hours of laying on my face before the Lord, um, I feel like that intimacy and that connection was able to form. Um, a lot of times I'd receive God's revelation in my prayer closet, praying and crying out on behalf of other people in their situation. And so I'm in the middle of pleading for someone else and then the Lord will drop nuggets and he dropped old instructions of do this. I want you to do that concerning dance. I've been in prayer and intercession for others and the Lord will say the song that I'm playing, that's your next song to minister to. I'm going to bring forth freedom uh, to those that are going to watch as you minister this song. And I think that your prayer life is more important than your five, six, seven, eight. Because if the prayer life and your intimate time with God is there, everything else will follow. I get more instructions from the Lord for dance in my prayer closet than anywhere else. I mean, and it's usually, I strongly believe in laboring for somebody else in prayer. So I feel like I'll make my requests known for my things, but I believe that as I labor for others, God will take care of what I've got going on. So as I labor and travail for other people, I've seen the Lord give instructions. I've seen the Lord open doors. Every time I spend time seeking him for someone else, a door opens for me or instructions come for me. So I definitely think that uh, anyone in, in the praise dance community uh, that is striving to hear God, is striving to find out what's next and what does he want for them and what is his will concerning them in dance ministry definitely need to spend as much time as possible laying on their face before the Lord. That's a good, incredible reminder for us. And especially as we are looking at creative outlets and we know how God is the creative mm -hmm. entity of all entities that exist, yeah. the artist of all artists. <laughs> and um, it, it makes sense that, um, that there's ways that he'll communicate to us in creative um, instruction and in discipline and in other modes to be able to relay. Um, yes, we know that things happen in the natural form and in the body. And we also know that things happen in the supernatural form um, because it is evident body and soul, mind, will, emotions, and spirit and how all those move together. And so to receive from God in that way, to listen um, to him, commune with you, to receive things about how you are to continue in ministry. It's just, it's admirable and really beautiful. Well, bless his name. <laughs> yeah. Well, as you're continuing to understand that, um, you know, this discipline of prayer and how valuable that is, um, so um, integral to your own faith and your ministry as you're continuing to listen and cultivate other leadership skills. Like I'm sure you're, you're modeling what it is to be a prayer warrior and what it is to be before the Lord in prayer. What do you feel are other leadership qualities um, that are important to cultivate for good leadership? Well, I definitely think... Um that accountability is important as a leader. And what I mean by that is most dance ministry leaders um, that I've experienced right now in 2020 are kind of like doing what they think is right in their own eyes. And 
I think that the leader themselves should find a leader more matured in the faith that they can glean from and be accountable to for their actions. Um, I think accountability is one thing, but I also think um, consistency would be the next thing. Uh, whatever they're doing to consistently do it. Um, if you're going to have a set practice at a certain time every week, stay with that. If you're going to have a set time that your group is going to fast and pray every week or month, stay with it. Whatever they're doing, I believe the consistency in it. Some will start training uh, with some technical things, maybe using YouTube videos or something, but they'll do it once here, once there, and then kind of fall off. Whatever that they're going to do and present to their group as a leader, I think the consistency um, to see it through is important. And I think that's also a key to why the Lord has uh, blessed our ministry so much is because even through the hardships, through all of the many difficulties and trials that we as a ministry have gone through, just the consistency to not quit and not give up has literally carried us through as well. Um, we do have many accountability um, practices set in place uh, with our team. Uh, we try to share that with other ministries uh, because I think two ministries break down for the lack of communication. So if the leader is in open communication with the members, um, talking to them and not so much talking at them in an authoritative manner, but talking to them to communicate to see where are they. And one final thing, I think that with the accountability, they need to keep tabs on where are the people in their groups spiritually because a lot of people can tend to fall through the cracks and they may not even be living the Christian lifestyle anymore, but they're still dancing with your group. And as a leader, you know, you need to be aware of these things. And so that goes back with that accountability uh, with our group. I literally keep tabs on them. That's why we keep a small group because I want to be able to do my part as the leader and not be stretched too thin. So I doubt I'll ever have a group beyond five to six people because I want to make sure that I can stay with them and make sure that not only I'm growing spiritually, but they are as well. So it's, it's obviously a ministry out to the people yeah. that are recipients of your offering through dance. It's a ministry to the inner working within the group and within the company. Yes. And um, sometimes I believe that we think about dance and ministry as an action of what we're going to do for others to receive in our offerings and our praise offerings and dance. We do forget at times about the pastoral role of the leader and how important that is for you as a leader, for me as a leader, or anyone who has the opportunity to shepherd others, there is that responsibility in that leadership role. And so thank you for, for modeling that and thank you for reminding us of how important that is and how valuable that is. Yeah, so I, think, I think it's so important. And I think right now in the dance ministry, that's where the breakdown is. I believe um, as I, I get tagged in so many videos of people ministering on Sundays and, and uh, when they tag me in the video, they tag maybe two or three of their other group members that are in the dance. And so I'm the person that will click on each of the pre people tagged in the video if they're the dancer in the video and I'll kind of skim their Facebook page and you can see that the lifestyle is not matching what they just ministered. And I, I think that's why um, each year we do a conference entitled Returning to Holiness. And the whole conference is focused on your intimate personal relationship with Christ. And through this conference, we try to get dancers back on that narrow path if they've drifted off. And just last year, we had 21 people recommit their life to Christ. And they're in full-time active dance ministry and literally have wandered onto that broad road unknowingly you know nobody was there to say hey you know i kind of noticed you did this and bring it to their attention and and pray them through not so much judge them but be the helping hand to kind of guide them back to the right track and i always tell my group i'm not gonna have your blood on my hands when i have to give an account to god for what i did with you i want to be able to say i did my best to keep 
you know, to keep nudging you back to him versus turning a deaf ear or a blind eye to your actions. You know, so we really take holy living uh, seriously. Big time. Praise God. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just so refreshing because sometimes when we're in ministry or we're in Christian service, it's so focused on the doing and so focused on what our output is and how we're serving. And when our vessels are empty mm-hmm. and we haven't been filled to the fullness of Christ Jesus, when we are operating from just those fumes or operating from past um, fillings from God and past mm-hmm. um, opportunities where he has um, you know, been so prevalent in our life, it's just that. It's, we're just offering what we are offering in vain and not from that overflow are not from being informed and right. in filled. And so praise God. It's just beautiful, really beautiful hearing the focus of what you're doing. And, and we were just talking about that um, very fact the other day with the university students that I work with about being conscientious of their social media presence yes. because they don't necessarily always have the forethought or we um, don't have the forethought to consider who may be looking at it and might it be a future employer or a right. future ministry partner. Um, so I really appreciate that admonishment to um, keep it holy, keep it pure and keep it straight and keep it right before <laughs> the Lord. So with some of the travels you've done, you've been able to see how God is moving through the arts in different areas, different pockets around the U.S., Um, but just in general, I'd love to hear your take on where do you think we are today in relationship to either secular or sacred, holy, you know, spiritual, um, liturgical dance, dance ministry, um, where do you feel like we are and how do you feel like God is moving in those areas today? Well, I definitely, definitely beyond a shadow of a doubt believe that the dance ministry as a whole is in position where we have to respond to the call of repentance. I believe that uh, the majority from what I have seen of dance ministry is is in a very lukewarm state meaning it's kind of like the sloppy agape and greasy grace. I've met with ministries that um, the team rarely even attends church services for continual growth in God's word. And I've met members of teams that are, they're, they're, they're not in connection or fellowship with God. And, you know, we just had the Super Bowl uh, a, a week or so ago and the dance through the Super Bowl was so sexual and so secular. I feel like it's almost like a, a it, we know it was a performance, but I believe the church is embracing the spirit of performance. Meaning we'd much rather have somebody to get up and appease our flesh versus to get up there and minister to the spirit. We're more con concerned with the applause of the crowd, if these people are going to respond to us emotionally or if they're going to videotape us so we'll have a good Facebook video that's going to get a bunch of likes and views and shares. And I I believe right now the Spirit of the Lord is calling the Ministry of the Arts to repent and go back to their first love when they desire to worship God just because of who he was and what he did for them personally. And all I see right now is people, when, when the dancers get up to minister, everybody whips out their phone and starts recording. And so what we are doing now is we're asking them not to even, don't record this, because some things are for that house at that moment. It's not for Facebook. 
I mean, I love having a, a video um, or a recollection to go back and reflect on what God did. But some videos you guys may never even see because we believe it was for that house at that moment at that time. But we're in this generation of social media where everything has to be seen. We have to show what we've done. Um, and I feel like it breeds um, a lack of reverence for what we are actually doing. Yes, we want to bless others with what we're doing. Yes, we want others to see the movement of God, but is it the time? Does he want you to do it with that dance? You know, I think the sensitivity again um, is lacking, but I believe that as a whole, the dance ministry community is in a lukewarm state where we've become comfortable with a performance versus using our ministry to create an atmosphere that will bring forth salvation, healing and deliverance. I almost sound like a broken record because this is always what I'm saying. We don't even use popular trendy music when we minister. I try to find songs that's gonna touch the heart or, or the soul of a man that would draw out repentance or bring forth healing because I feel like I only got one shot to minister to you. This moment has to be effective. So I think the church is going with whatever song is popular whatever song is gonna cause an emotional response. Um, we're more focused on the garments that we're wearing and how they look, you know, and how elaborate they are, or if we have the latest thing, if it's trending. I think all of those things have sidetracked us from the why we do what we do. First, we're doing it because we wanna worship in spirit and in truth and let others in on what God has given us. But we wanna create this atmosphere where the spirit of the Lord can come in and touch the lives of his people. And I don't find that to be the goal of the, the dance ministry anymore. I get so many people that send me videos and say, hey, look at this and tell me that I do this right. And I'm thinking, how can you do it wrong if your heart is, Lord, use me to bring somebody closer to you? And not that it's wrong to get critiqued or to ask for counsel, but I mean, I'm always picking up that the motive is, did I do a good job? Did you like it? Was it okay? Did it meet your standard? I don't have a standard. My standard is, did, did God's heart become softened and, and, and was he pleased by your ministry and what you presented? And so um, literally when I get tagged in videos now, I just untag myself because I know that they just want me to see versus um, us being blessed by what they actually presented before the Lord and his people. So I definitely think that universally, and I see it everywhere I go, I've not been to one conference or one event that I have not seen this lukewarmness. I've even been to dance ministry events where the dancers are dancing to secular music. I mean, I, that one, that floored me, you know, that we're in a church, we're in a Christian event, and they danced to a secular song. And I guess it was inspirational, but it had nothing to do with Christ. It had no place in the church, but this is what we are becoming because of the lack of holiness and the lack of being sanctified and the lack of spending intimate time with God. Now we're just performing. Some of these events are nothing more than a Super Bowl halftime show. And I mean, the sensuality that I'm even seeing in dance to just relate the two and why I brought it up. It, it's heartbreaking because I've never seen so much hair flinging and erotic movements in dance ministry. And it's very subtle, but it's there. And I think they're using the hair flinging to create some intensity to get an emotional response. But I tell people, I don't care if you clap, you jump, you shout, but I, I care about if we left an impression on your heart that made you want more of God. That's our motive. And I think as a dance ministry, we've gotten away from that. Well, well as, as I'm hearing you speak, it, it even reminds me of this understanding when we, when we pray that we're to go in our closet and we're to pray. And that there's times when it's very private and very intimate and it's intended only for that communion between me and God intimately. And then there's times when we know we're in a corporate setting and it's a corporate time for others to engage in that opportunity to commune with God, to worship. Um, and then I do believe that there's times when there's a public engagement, both as a 
um, corporately gathering together as believers and to be an example of how to commune with God, but also in a public demonstration so we can, um, again, it, it would be almost setting a standard, the standard of God, the standard of the Holy Spirit, the standard of Christ, that high standard and the high calling. Um, but to really understand that there's times in ministry, there's times in teaching, there's, I mean, there's times when things need to be private and there's times when things need to be public and to have the right. discernment to know. Um, I mean, for me, as it, even as I'm hearing you speak it, it, one of my, I don't know, educational kind of, um, not pet peeves, but just something that I've wanted to help share through my years is when dance is presented, and, and I've been involved in opportunities to present dance in secular arenas, in concert settings, um, also in um, settings where it's in the church or in other worship settings. I mean, just an array of opportunities. Um, and there's sometimes when applause is appropriate, but there's mm -hmm. sometimes when, for me, I just don't want applause. I don't want people to respond that way. I want the response not to be that automatic train conditioned behavior. Yes. I just want it to be, oh God, please let it just be soul soaking. Let it just come in and um, minister and that the response is just as you're articulating, oh, unto you be all glory. I want more of you, God. And so, um, and it, and it is confusing at times because we do live in this world and arts and entertainment have such a strong um, voice in our culture and society and how to be able to contend with that and how to be able to not conform to that and be a part of the voice that transforms that. Um, so you're just on the, uh, such a beautiful track. And I know you don't need my praise or approval or admonishment or encouragement necessarily um, because you do what you do because of God's calling. Um, but it's, it's so refreshing, Rachel. And I just, I really appreciate hearing your heart and that desire, holiness, make holiness ablaze within. It's, it's so beautiful. So as we're, as we're bringing this to a close, and I don't want to, I would love to just visit with you all, all morning long. Um, what, what else might be on your heart that um, as you have viewers now that will listen to this, um, things that you want to say to encourage other leaders or just what you value um, that you could, could leave us with? Uh, again, I may sound a bit redundant, but the most important thing is that you build and you uphold and you sustain your intimate personal relationship with Christ. If that relationship stays intact, and if you remain sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, you can't go wrong. Your ministry is bound to thrive. Your ministry is thrive to prosper. And everything that you need is bound to come to pass. If you seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, just like the scripture said, everything else is going to be added unto you. One other thing, I'm, I beg and beseech you not to compare yourself to another ministry. What God has for you will happen in the right time, in the right season. It doesn't matter how much you cry, pray, and beg God. It's not going to happen until he's ready. So enjoy the process. If you're in a time of waiting, wait and let your strength be renewed. If you're in a time that God has you exposed before the public, make sure that you walk in a spirit of humility, being very careful to give all glory, accolades, and praise back to the Father. Be very mindful that even though we're in the forefront, it is only that Christ may be seen through us. Keep holiness in your dance ministry. And so um, again, we have resources to offer to help um, we have the online school of worship. It is a three month 
training program where we literally train dancers in what God requires as far as a holy and righteous lifestyle. And it is accompanied by a dance class. So you also get the technical training. We have returning to holiness for this year. It's July 16th, 17th, and 18th. It is an intense three-day spiritual transformation. Last year, we were simply floored at what God did. I it was far beyond my expectations. I was just a facilitator trying to be led by the spirit of the Lord, but God came in and brought mighty deliverance. It's over 40 different classes over three days that will change your life. The theme this year is experiencing the fire of God from Deuteronomy chapter five, verse 24. And it's just a bunch of believers that are coming together to get more of him. And in 2020, I challenge you, to seek the Lord. He said, if you seek me, I shall be found. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, we've been able to connect together for a little while, um, but you know I love you, and I'm just so <laughs> blessed by you and um, what God's doing through you, and I can't be, um, I don't know, any more blessed by um, your pursuit of God and your pursuit of really wanting all that you do to bring back honor and praise and glory to him. It's just gorgeous. And I heap blessings upon blessings upon blessings on you, my dear friend, and just Thank ask you, that his yeah. abundance would be made known so you can continue in this work that he's called you to, my friend. So beautiful. Thank you so much. I speak those same blessings right back over you. I thank you for even this opportunity to share. Yeah, well, it's definitely my honor and we'll make sure we post um, those connections so people can have access to the school and um, just the curriculum and opportunities and upcoming conferences. And so thank you again, my dear friend. No problem. Thank you for having me.